So this is the Fujifilm X70. It's a camera released in 2016 and I basically bought it as a travel everyday snappy camera. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my first impressions. Yeah, so, but before we do, let's first look a bit what's under the hood here. And this is not gonna be too technical. Fixed lens camera, 18.5 millimeters, which is roughly 28 millimeters in full frame. F 2.8 lens, leaf shutter into it, built-in flash, oh yeah. It is the same sensor, the X-Trans 3 sensor, as the Fujifilm X-T1, X-T10, the X100S, so the second iteration, and the X100T, the third iteration of those X100 series. Eight frames per second shooting. It's not weather sealed, no IBIS, no viewfinder. Now that's all that I really want to say from it. It's got one card slot. It weighs about 335 grams with the battery included, which is really light. Why did I buy this camera? It's very simple. If you know the channel, I love my small point and shooters. I'm always looking for cameras which are light, easy to carry when I go somewhere on travel and I don't want to have an entire sling back around my shoulder. Now, with that, we know it's small. So what about the ergonomics? Well, that's an interesting part here. This has no real grip except for the little thumb rest here. And the previous owner put this little grippy here and so that you have a little bit more grip. And as you can see here, there is a little thing which I normally connect a little strap into like a little wrist strap, but this is pretty much pocketable. So that is pretty decent, I would say. It's great to have this little flippy screen which is also touch enabled, so you can set your focus with it. You can also take pictures with it and you can easily disable it. So from an ergonomics point of view, it's very much pocketable even with this weird thing onto it. Um, when you start shooting with this, that's what the next part is, the, is where we can see whether or not this camera actually did what I hoped it would do. And I have to say this camera doesn't disappoint me at all. The first thing I had to get used to is that when you look, and before I forget, if you're enjoying this episode, please hit the like button consider subscribing and if you know somebody who actually is interested in this camera forward them a little whatsapp with this episode in it at the lens here you see here the manual ring manual focusing ring which is also kind of an function button so you can allocate certain features to it. I had allocated my film sims towards it so nice and easy when, when you're shooting and I quickly found out because of the aperture ring and the manual focus ring so closely together and when I shoot I normally do like this yeah then you start twisting and turning it so after about I think half an hour I just disabled this function and basically got to work in shooting and this is for me it's not street photography it's, yeah you can call it travel photography you can call it personal snaps uh, experience atmospheric whatever started wandering through Krakow chose an aperture of f uh, 5.6 a automatic shutter right as you can see here so I can nicely use the exposure dials which is nicely placed here shot on uh, spot metering yeah, so it means if I'm shooting into the sun, I can actually change the focus and you see the uh, entire exposure changing. Uh, the ISO, I normally shoot when it comes to daylight between 200 and 400 and I use classic chrome. Yeah, so for about a week, I was walking through Krakow taking all kinds of pictures, you know, and I love these pictures where I have a story with, nobody understands them except me, but I find them fascinating. You see an example here. And what I really liked about this camera is that nobody notices it yeah, so it's not if you're walking with an uh Fuji film camera normally a lot of people saying oh is that an X1 uh, 106 or a 5 and it's like no it's an XT1 oh bummer camera nobody shoots nobody shoots you nobody really notices you the fact that you can flip your screen like this is really cool and you can even if you want to uh, start shooting without pushing the shutter button which is really nice I think this camera here when you use the auto mode what I notice is it it kind of here. It kind of overexposes by one or two stops. I have no idea why why that is, but it is that way. So I quickly, you know, use these settings and I started going around and I was a bit skeptical about this camera, but it really is nice shooting in bright daylight. And you're thinking bright daylight, Jesus boy, have you not done anything? You've got a flash. I don't like using the flashes. So, but once I returned here to my hometown, there's the annual fair here. I just decided about an hour ago, you know, just on the break of, of, of dusk, let's go. It's great. It's got all kind of neon, but it's not perfect light. And let's test out the ISO handling on this camera. And I have to be honest, I was actually quite surprised on ISO uh, 1600 and 3200, really crisp, clean images, nice shutter speeds, 
no issues there, even with the f2.8, or I often put it on f4. Yeah, it's kind of nice and challenging. And, you know, I don't like sacrificing my shutter speed. I don't think anybody should do it. Just bunk up your ISO and uh, stop too wide open and you should be there. Surprisingly good results. You see a few here now flying by. I, I was actually quite surprised how well this camera did. If I have to really summarize this, this is a great camera. A great camera. But there are a few things which I found a bit annoying. First of all, the battery life, and many online have said that is diabolical, and it is. And I shot in very warm weather in Krakow, 30 to 34 degrees centigrade. The one thing that I noticed in a battery, as long as you just keep shooting, it lasts quite a bit of time. And these are not the standard batteries you have. Uh, these are these really thin, smallish batteries. So it's not the standard Fuji battery. And I have to admit that once I started, for instance, uh, looking at the pictures I made via the screen here, or I started editing in camera, or twisting and tweaking through the menus, the battery drained really, really quickly. And I don't know if that's this copy or the copy of the battery, so let me know in the comments below. Yeah, the good thing is that you do have a little charging port here, so you can use external charging, but it's USB 2.0, which is quite, for that time was okay, but nowadays it's more um, USB-C what we're actually having. So those were the things that I was a bit hmm about. One thing that I am a bit underwhelmed by is the performance of the lens when it comes to autofocus. It's very choppy, and I normally use on all the Fuji cameras, I only use single, or, uh, single autofocus, and that normally tends to be quite okay, but this lens can hunt quite yeah, how would I say dramatically? <laughs> yeah, so that's definitely one thing that you need to keep into mind is that the actual lens is about, depending on the circumstances, I've noticed that in bright, very bright sunlight, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, and with dusk, if you don't manage your exposure correctly, it really starts to hunt, even in single. Especially because this is a fixed lens camera. And so my next question is then, does it warrant the price that I pay? I paid 425 euros for it, which is arguably quite a steal, but as a catch here, my ring here is a little bit loose, as you can see. There's a little bit of, of slack on it. It doesn't have any impact on the actual lens, I think. It could well be. So I bought it for 425 euros, and the problem with these type of point and shoot, especially from Fuji, is that they can be expensive really, really fast. I've seen prices on MPB, varying from 450 status well used to 795 to 800 and those prices change weekly i went on to ebay and especially in america and australia i see some really insane prices for this camera but it is a very much a sought after camera so if i really look at that price point let's say between four and five hundred bucks what are the alternatives well i think one of the best alternatives is the lumix gx 82 85 micro four thirds but really good image quality. You can see an episode here, two pancake lenses on it. Absolutely wonderful. And those two pancake lenses with a copy like this land you in that same 400, 500, 550 uh, price range if you buy them used. Now, obviously an, an X-T10 or an X-T1 would also be a great alternative with the 18 mil or the 27 mil. Just buy them used, you'll get fair deals on them. 